It was very simple because I, I am basically trained as a scientist, but by profession I am a businessman and uh, I had my own business. And the business got sold in 1998. And now I had a dilemma that uh, what I, what can I, how can I return something back to my country of origin? And I always felt very strongly that those of us who have, have had the good fortune in this country, that we should give back to our country of origin or country of birth, uh, which provided us free education and, uh, and made, made everything possible. So in 98, I decided I took a big chunk of money, most of my proceeds, and put it in an endowment uh, uh, for, to do charitable work. And uh, my incentive was really to be able to help the people because the villagers, villagers in India are very poor. So we wanted to help the people in the villages and I established, my family and I, my wife and I established a foundation in India in 1999. The business was sold, our business was sold in 1998. And the foundation is called SM Sagal Foundation, which is a trust, which is a charitable trust. And uh, it is operating from Gurgaon in, uh, in uh, Haryana state. The concept of philanthropy is, is uh, con philanthropy for development is very much an American concept. In India, we believe in charity or the, and the giving to the temples and to the religious institutions, but the concept of development at that time was not there. I'm talking in the 1999. So when I sold my business, I had a business in India also and some other places. Uh, first thing we did was that at that time, I took uh, part of the money and I shared my fortune, good fortune, with every employee in the company from a T-boy to a, to a driver to a, the big boss. It is not that the only selected few people got the money. No, we shared our money, wealth, with everybody uh, because that was a concept which again, uh, not very popular even in America, but I felt very strongly that without the people, uh, um, we could not succeed in business. People made us successful. So my, my purpose of sharing the wealth with our people was, with I said, everybody from a tea boy to a, uh, to, a, uh, to a peon and to a driver and a gardener, everybody got a check when the business was sold. Then whatever was left, we took a big chunk, which is almost, uh, 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 for me was quite a bit of money. I took uh, uh, the, I don't want to mention the figures, but it was, it was uh, a big chunk of money in uh, rupees, of course, becomes big. I took $60 million and set aside and put it in the foundation. And uh, we kept for ourselves what we need for our retirement because our children are settled, they don't need the money. Uh, they could use some money, but we put, <laughs> we kept to, to uh, only for the money for the retirement and the rest went into the foundation. It was primarily to help the people uh, who are not as fortunate as people like us are. Uh, India has many, many problems. As we know that once you enter the village, village has numerous problems. We decided that we have to be selective. And after a lot of experimentation, we came to the conclusion we can't do everything. We need to select the most important thing. There are three critical problems in India. One is water security, the other is food security, and the other is uh, social justice. Water security, India is a water, water stressed nation. India has uh, uh, after total land area available, India has only 2.4% of the land, 18% uh, of the world population, and only 4% of the available water, which is very little because India is a water-stressed nation. So Indian population is increasing because uh, it is expected that in, by year 2040 will be 1.7 billion, billion, uh, people. Oh, even right now the water is not available. In fact, there are so many uh, suicides uh, performers are committing because 
they have no water for irrigation or the, the rains don't come there is not enough water in uh, if you go to maharashtra this year is a very stressful situation because water for drinking is not even available because the people are taking their animals from one state to the other uh, just to have water for the cattle forget about the people people there is no water for the people so india is a water stressed nation i believe that uh, in the years to come there will be very very critical situation about water especially in the all the deccan plateau area because uh, the is a high country and uh, there is no water available the so will the question sometime we all will indian people die of thirst before they die of starvation and uh, so water scarcity is a big problem and uh, so water security is a big problem the second biggest problem in india is food security even now we are struggling because we have the largest malnourished population in the world many women in india are anemic they are not getting enough to eat and 70% of the people live in the in the in the in countryside where there is a, uh, although they may grow fruit but there are a lot of landless laborers Le- food is scarce in the country and food is expensive so and when the population is go, going to go up further 1.7 billion in 2040 from where is the food going to come from where are the we don't have the purchasing power to buy a lot of food from from the western world so food security is very very essential especially in the rural area the third problem which is the biggest problem in india is the social justice because if you are poor in india Uh, that uh, law is not uh, law does not favor you and uh, the bureaucracy is very very uh, because of your illiteracy and lack of knowledge you really don't know what are your rights as a and the bureaucrats can push you around because sometimes you are entitled for many things but you don't get them so our a lot of our emphasis is on these three things which we think are very very critical they are not critical only in india they are also critical in the rest of the developing world water security food security and social justice and when we come to talk of social justice the most critical issue of social justice is the women equality because women are uh, they by constitution they have the same right but in practice in our society the women have very uh, is treated as second class citizen so we believe that uh, social justice is very very important and those are the three key areas on which the foundation works when we started in 1999 we said we need to experiment what works and what doesn't work we started out with four villages in the, no six villages in 1999 and uh, year 2000 or 2001 and uh, then we moved on to 27 or 30 villages right now there are close to 500 villages under our wing under development and they are spread out in uh, we started in uh, north gurgaon uh district uh, mewat mewat is very very uh, in Bur- haryana may be a rich state but uh, mewat district is one of the poorest districts in the, in the haryana it has a very low social indices we picked mewat because of uh, extreme poverty from mewat then we spread out uh, in other parts and then we moved to rajasthan which is a neighboring uh, state and now we move to bihar uh, which is uh, which is uh, we're starting out in bihar and we are looking into the possibility of move, doing something in telangana and other pradesh but in the our there are 500 villages in uh, rajasthan haryana and bihar it is more like organic growth because we we selected the villages and mewat is one of the poorest villages in uh, in gurgaon in haryana then we selected uh, rajasthan because it is neighboring it is organic growth and uh, and it is called the alwar alwar district it is 
it is again based upon uh, that there is no water there. There is a lot of water scarcity. And since our work is on water, so we wanted to go into Alvar, Alvar, uh, Alvar area, that area. And also to bring women, because there is a women co-op which is very powerful, Ibtada. And uh, so we work very closely with the, the, on the women empowerment issue. And we went to, to no, Bihar from there. Bihar again, Bihar as a state has very poor indices in the country, it's one of the poorest states. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and from Bihar now we, we haven't expanded yet, but we are thinking about doing something in, in other states. Well, we started out with eight people, now we have 170, 100, close, close to 170 people. And most of the people work in the, are from that area. Our core staff, which is a, we call resource group, which are very well trained people, most of them have PhDs. They are only less than 40, but the rest of the people are in the front line. They work in the villages, live within the villages. They work with the people, with the, found, uh, with the community. Uh, we don't, we do very little work ourselves, but we are more catalysts because we are most, uh, more, we want the community to take the responsibility for their own development, not that we doing something for them. No, the community must do what they think is important for them. Because when we started, there were two main things which uh, drove, drove us. Uh, the, there must be impact at the end of the day. I am a businessman. We always look at the bottom line, and you know, is a profit and loss. In the non-profit sector, impact is your bottom line. There has to be impact, and that impact has to be sustainable. Uh, that, that means the villagers will continue to, uh, to uh, make progress, that maintain it, whatever is built and whatever is done, they can build upon it and not destroy it. So I think it was very, the driving force for us was the impact and sustainability. And those are the two key components of our strategy. We have a, close to nine people, they are economists. Uh, the, the, the leader and of course their the research associate. Uh, we, to start with, we, before a program is started, we take a baseline survey, uh, baseline data, where we collect the, what the baseline data is, and we continuously monitor that uh, project. And uh, monitoring is also done by our own, uh, the people who are economists, who are trained in that kind of a, a subject. And then at the end, once the project is finished, we they again take the data and compare it with the original baseline survey. And that is how you determine the impact. If whatever we do, is it having an impact or not? And as I said, what you, in our, we have a slogan actually, that if you can't measure it, don't do it. So we must be able to measure what we do and establish that there is an impact, definite impact, and the impact is sustainable. Uh, we believe that government, we must work with the government because government is the largest delivery system in rural India. They have the funds, they are the very large, except the bureau bureaucracy is not uh, responding to the needs of the villagers. So our job was to make sure that the community and the bureaucracy can work together. So we are sort of linkage, we provide the linkage. On the funding side, yes, we have corporate partners. Uh, we, Coca-Cola is one of our uh, good for funding institutions because they, 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 they sponsor the projects on water. Then we have a very large company, agricultural company, the phosphate company, Mosaic. Fertilizer. They are based here in Minneapolis. They are they are the world largest in the phosphates. So they provide us funding on the agricultural sector, and uh, then we have Bayer of Germany. They also work on water, but they are in the water surplus area. They work. We work with them in Bihar, 
And uh, on the social uh, sector side, on the social justice side, uh, we don't have many partners because we are looking for them because most of the time the people are willing to put the money in the hardware, in the buildings or infrastructure, but very few organizations are willing to put the money in the software development, people, human development. Our emphasis in uh, social justice is on the, on the people, empowering the people because they a empowered in, a individual can create miracle, provided some resources. So, but the, many of the organizations are not willing to provide the fund for human development. So we provide most of the money which goes into so in that program is comes from our own resources. Community Radio was amazingly became very, very successful. Alphys M. Mewat, uh, this is uh, the voice of Mewat. And um, we started as a small project. And uh, uh, our main thrust is really that it should become a people's program, not our program. So we have, uh, uh, we, in India, the community radio, you can only buy so much, uh, radius because you cannot go beyond a certain and once you have one license you cannot have more than one license so what we are doing is that we are developing many many programs which we give it to uh, not to sell it just cooperate with other radio stations and give it to them uh, you know the the voice of the village and just like kanoon ki baat is one of our big program that uh, what is what are your rights as a a citizen, the Indian Constitution guarantees a lot of rights, and uh, and a program from Sesame, which is adapted Sesame straight here in the U.S. And so we develop many many programs, and the radio has become like, much more successful, and it's beyond our expectations because we get uh, we have interactive program on the on the on the radio, and the. Many calls coming in, I thousand the telephone calls, the phone is always ringing because there is an interactive program. We invite an uh, expert and, you know, when you, we are talking kanoon ki baat hai, what is by law, uh, we get an expert, a judge or a, a legal people to answer the people's question. Because people have simple questions because in the rural in India, the people are very poor and they were very, many of them are illiterate. They know they don't know what are their rights to create uh, awareness about their rights, what they are entitled to. It's very important that the, the things are explained in a very, very simple way. So they can call and they can get an answer on the radio. It's a fantastic way, way of spreading the message. Oh, we used to go twice a year for the, since 1990, we have been going there twice a year uh, in spring and the fall. And each time we spend about the average about one month. But uh, now we go once a year minimum. And when we are there, we spend a month. But the most important thing is to have the people there uh, on the spot. Because it's very important because the people who are doing the work is at the front line. And if you have a good management, then the people do respond. So we are, we are very good people, we are excellent, they are well-trained people. The most important thing is the only source of fresh water uh, is uh, rain. And rain, uh, rainy season is becoming shorter and shorter uh, in the country. Monsoon used to be four months five months, now the rainy season has become short. Most of the ra rains come, a torrential rains, in a very short period. The only solution is that we must build a lot of what We must be able to harvest the only, as I said, only source of fresh water is the rain. So we need to collect the rainwater. And second important thing is that we should be able to store water for the dry season. So we need the collection, we need the storage, and, and if it is to be used for drinking water, we need to be able to refine the water and to clean it. 
uh, to make it drinkable. So I think our thrust of the foundation is primarily on water collection and water storage uh, and uh, the distribution. On the, on the collection side, uh, the only way is to collect in the rain shed, uh, in the watershed area or on the roofs, the water, then you should be able to store it. India's water storage capacity is very little. There is a, only uh, water storage capacity is 200 cubic meters uh, per capita. Whereas uh, in China, it is, although China is also a water stressed nation, India is, uh, in China is over 1,000. So India has one-fifth storage capacity as compared to China. And India has one-tenth the capacity as compared to America. Uh, the, although America has a very, very good rainfall, but the storage capacity of, in the dams or the, uh, the wells or uh, aquifers is uh, much higher. So our storage capacity, we need much more storage capacity. In old days, the water used to be stored in the ponds and the village wells and the, and the aquifers and bowlies and so on. All these people have, been under, have come under brick and mortar. So I think if we want to take care of water needs during the dry season, we must have water stored, which can be used during the dry season. If we had stored water, we could only irrigate. And that is the only solution. There is no other solution.